it is like ah, week two of quarantine week three i don't know i don't know what day it is let's ride in the hot mess express yeah <laughs> you guys get to witness my Hermione Granger hair circa the first <laughs> Harry Potter video. I feel like that somehow made it worse because now it looks like I have a bird's nest on top of my head. You know what? This lighting is just, it's just not going to work for me. So I'm going to take you guys over to the window. Whoops. Even though it's raining and even though it might be kind of dark. We'll find out. We have certainly never filmed at this angle before, have we? My stomach was just growling. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, guys. Um, sorry the video is going up a little bit later than usual, but it is April 1st. And, well, it's April 1st for you guys. I'm filming this on Monday again. But, um, yeah, April 1st is the first day of Camp Nano. And on Instagram, if you follow me over there. I did announce today on my Insta stories that I had to postpone Own Your Thrive, which was supposed to be taking place May 16th to 17th. And just given everything that's going on with the pandemic and CDC's guidelines and requirements, um, I just, I knew that it was in all of our best interests to go ahead and postpone that. So last week was really tough for me. It was hard to film. It was hard to feel positive and upbeat and uplifting. And I just know better than to film when I'm in a headspace like that. This morning was a little bit tough as well when I finally did announce it because it brought back all of those feelings again that I've been feeling over the past week. But I have found that sometimes creating can really help pull me out of a funk or out of the mood and sometimes just talking about it um, can really help. So I don't have the finalized dates yet for when Own Your Thrive will be taking place. I'm hoping that it's going to be later this fall. Like I'm really crossing my fingers for September, like late September, but it really depends on with the vendors and the venue and like there's a lot of moving pieces and I'm one person putting this whole thing together by myself. So there's there's a lot going on. So I appreciate your patience and understanding while I figure this out. And hopefully I will have an update on the new dates for Own Your Thrive in my next video. By the way, we're sitting in my bedroom. So welcome. Welcome to my bedroom. So it's been an interesting time, obviously, for all of us. For me, March and April were supposed to be really heavily focused on Own Your Thrive since that event was happening in May. And now that that's not the case, I'm feeling, I'm feeling grateful that I have multiple creative projects to work on, but I've kind of had to switch around my schedule and it's been really weird having to do that with so much uncertainty and with so much up in the air. But today's really the first day I started looking at everything and moving things around and I realized that since it is Camp Nano, that I am going to be heavily focused on writing this month, which is exciting because I feel like I get to get back into that creative flow, back into the Shadow Crown world and Eridon, and I have other projects that I'm working on. So yeah, I'm basically switching focus. So I'm going to take a break from Own Your Thrive and get back into writing. And seeing as it is Camp Nano NaNoWriMo, I decided I would go ahead and film some writing related videos for the month of April. And so today's video is going to be specifically how to continue writing or basically how to write when you're in a really high stress, high anxiety time. A very timely video if you ask me. So I will be filming some of it today, some of it tomorrow just to break things up a little bit. So I might look like this, I might look different depending on if I'm filming tomorrow. And I just wanna give you guys some tips, kind of do it vlog style, um, because I feel like vlogs for me right now are just, that's where I can really put a lot of my creativity and that, that flow into them. So it's just more fun to do vlogs sometimes. So let's get into these five tips for how to write during high stress times. Or 
in the nook, so you probably know what that means. But I'm really big into meditation and journaling, and I have found this has really helped during this time. And just anytime I'm feeling like there's a lot of stress or anxiety, uncertainty, a lot of pressure, and a lot of just like tension. So the first thing I recommend doing if you find that you are feeling really stressed out or really anxious and it is affecting your creativity and your writing is to actually go ahead and grab a journal and brain dump all of the thoughts that you have onto the page. Actually physically write them out. Just let everything you're thinking flow onto the page. If it's something you're embarrassed about after you write it, you can always rip the page out, light it on fire, throw it away, rip it up, recycle it, whatever you want to do. But at least get all of that junk, all of that stuff that is clogging up your creative pipes, so to speak, out of your head and out in the open or just at least on a page. Once you've brain dumped everything that's going on in your mind into your journal, my second tip is to meditate. And depending on whether you're wanting to boost your creativity or you're feeling a lot of anxiety and you're wanting to calm yourself down, I like to meditate with different crystals. So whether you believe in crystals and the metaphysical or not, I mean, don't knock it till you try it, right? <laughs> I have found that when I have citrine and carnelian close to me, I tend to feel like I have more creativity, that the flow is more flowing. For anxiety, I have found that obsidian is really helpful because it helps block out negative energy, whether that's emotional, physical, mental, negative energy. I also like to keep rose quartz nearby because this is the crystal of unconditional love. So that's really helpful. And then also clear quartz is just the master healer. This is a crystal that never has to be cleansed. And it's something whenever I feel it, I feel like it's cleansing it's just cleansing me in general. So I like to have rose quartz and clear quartz next to me for anxiety, for calming purposes, as well as obsidian, but I can't find it right now. It's probably in my office. And then in order to boost creativity or just kind of unblock the flow, if you will, I like to have citrine and carnelian. If you've never meditated before, I do offer some free meditations here on my YouTube channel. I will make sure to link them down below. One of them is for boosting creativity and the other one, which is perfect, is for anxiety and how to work through your anxiety. So again, you can find the links to both of those meditations in the description box below. They're really short, I think five to eight minutes. They're guided meditations, so you can use those. <laughs> Look at that, I actually got dressed today. Wow, my hair is extra extra curly today. I've just been letting it air dry. This has been what it's looked like for the past couple of weeks. Quarantine life. So clearly it's another day. Let's go ahead and continue on with these tips for how to write during high stress times. My third tip is something that I'm not doing right now, but it's something I have been doing, which is to swap out your candles for essential oils. I've been playing around with some different blends that I found on Pinterest, so that's been really fun. So I have my essential oil diffuser. Normally I keep it over in the nook. Sometimes I will bring it over into my office. Today I'm, I lit a candle, it's fine. But most, most often nowadays I have been using my essential oil diffuser and I have been loving diffusing eucalyptus essential oils as well as lavender essential oil. These both have calming effects. I have noticed eucalyptus gives me a little bit more of an energized, kind of like more like a spa smell, whereas lavender, since that's what I use to help me fall asleep, I kind of save lavender for later on, like late at night when I need to calm down after writing. You know, if I have a writing session at like two or three o'clock in the morning, I'll diffuse some lavender essential oil and that helps promote a very restful, peaceful sleep. My fourth tip is to switch to tea or to start drinking tea if it's something that you don't currently indulge in. So I used to drink coffee every single morning. I found that I do have a bit of a caffeine sensitivity and caffeine, when I have too much caffeine, I get really anxious. And so obviously during a high stress time, like right now, coffee is something I've sort of stayed away from. But the honey chamomile tea from, I believe it's Celestial something is the name of the, the brand of the tea. I can't remember off the top of my head, but Celestial 
seasons or tidings or I don't know that's probably not what it's called but that tea as of late has been my favorite and my fifth tip is for those of you who are fortunate enough to be at home right now while this pandemic is going on now is a wonderful time to actually change up your writing routine and try writing at different times of the day so I've talked about this in past videos just figuring out when your creative zone of genius is like what time it is and so if you find that you're able to sleep in a little bit later because you're not having to commute to work or you can stay up a little bit later because you don't have to wake up as early. Now is a great time to try writing at different times of the day to really narrow down when your creative flow is at its peak. So I have gotten really creative with my writing routine because I've known for a very long time now that I am a night owl and while the world is kind of on pause during the day, especially now, I found even more so that at night it's really quiet, really silent. I've been staying up until 3 a.m., 4 a.m. some nights because from 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. is like my prime optimal writing time. And it's really nice right now because when I wake up in the morning, it's not like the business, the day-to-day -day operations that I'm used to doing have kind of fallen back or scaled back a little bit. So I'm able to write during that optimal creative time. And a bonus piece of advice to tie back into the first tip of journaling is to actually use what's in your journal, like to reflect on that, those emotions, how you're feeling, and see if you can channel whatever those emotions are into your writing. So maybe if you're feeling sadness, you can channel that into a certain scene, or if you have this, this feeling of longing, like you want to be reunited with your friends and family, maybe there's a scene in your book where you can channel that sense of longing, you know, into, into that scene. You can even channel anxiety into your art. If you are writing for a specific character who maybe deals with anxiety or they're going through a really tough situation, they're dealing with a lot of unknowns, a lot of uncertainty, use your own uncertainty, use your own anxiety and channel that into your characters. When we take real human emotion and we're able to transmute that into our characters, into our plot lines, into certain scenes, I think it makes the story that much more real. It gives it so much more depth. So those are my tips for writing during high stress times. I've got my blue light blocking glasses. I've got my writing gloves. I'm gonna go ahead and get some writing in, get some B-roll for you guys. Hopefully that helps get you motivated. And if you didn't know, I do offer a writing course. It's an e-course called Write 50K in 30 Days. I've helped hundreds of people write their first drafts, 50,000 words, in just a month's time with this course. It comes with a 35 page workbook, four pep talk videos, two training videos, like actual workshop videos on self editing your novel, as well as outlining your novel, a bunch of tools and resources, lifetime access, a members only page. The lifetime access thing is really cool because I tend to add videos and resources and tools to that members only page. And so once you get it, it's yours for life. So any new tools that are added onto there, are yours for free. Even though Camp Nano has started, that doesn't mean you can't use the first week to do the prep work and the outlining for your novel. I will go ahead and leave the link for that e-course, Write 50K in 30 Days, in the description box below. It is a $200 value, but I am offering it for 50% off, so it's just 97 bucks. Let us get some words down, shall we?